right, right. Oh, that Which, sounds interesting. Oh, it's it's super interesting, especially if you're fucking like a history nerd like I am for this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. So, how you guys doing today? Yeah, welcome to Ungodly Geeks. I'm Joe. I'm Luke. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Every now and then, he turns <laughs> into a werewolf, and we have to hit him with bamboo sticks um, yeah. that are coated in virgin blood to get him to calm I, down. I change into my persona, and then uh, have to be beaten with sticks. Because that's the only way to keep it contained. Because otherwise, it's it just gets really bad. <laughs> to keep the degeneracy contained. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's no worse than going to a Catholic school. So you know, it's good. It's all. It's, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they beat the disenergy out of you. It's okay. They, they beat the um, uh, what would the the uh, the discipline into you? I guess is the best way to put it. Or they pull a Bob Fuck Ross man. and they're beating the devil out of you. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a, a show on Comedy Central. I don't know when it's on. I don't know how. I, it's got to have been out for years, at least a couple <clears> of years. Right. Called this is not happening and fuck okay. i might have mentioned it on this podcast i don't know but what it is is these comedians get up and they just tell a story usually it's about six to like 12 minutes long yeah maybe 15 not very long and they just tell a story and i it's probably a, episodes or multiple comedians but i just watch the youtube clips right because i don't watch i don't have cable television um joey diaz I've mentioned it before. One of my absolute all time favorite comedians. He tells this story about being in Catholic school where this nun just beat him to the point of breaking. And he and ends up kicking the shit out of this nun with another kid when he's like six years old. And the fucking way he, that he describes it, he's beating this nun with like a book while this other kid is kicking her on the ground. Other kids are cheering them on in the background. <laughs> That yeah. is really not cool. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, that's completely it, wrong. I love it. When he goes through the story, this bitch totally deserved <laughs> No, I get that. Like, I'm totally down with that. It's yeah. Just... Oh, yeah. This is, it's like back in the show. It's on workshop, Comedy Central? Was... Yeah, the show is. I don't know when they air it or whatever. Well, I mean, um, okay. So I. On the air? Right. Well, I've, I've mentioned before um, Philo mm -hmm. TV, a great yeah. online TV service that, you know, this is basically like a cable chat, cable package. Um, and like I said, I mean, I've, I, we've mentioned it before where they don't pay us. So this is not like this is sponsored or anything. Um, but no. I, I, I wanted mean, to go and check it. To. I mean, yeah, they want to throw us like a, a check for <laughs> 20 bucks for the one person that's going to sign up for it. Um, from our podcast. Great. Go for it. Yeah. Um, but no, like you, you made me kind of go and look it up. Like, Hey, uh, do I have that as a part? And Comedy Central is a part of my TV service with Philo. So I'm I'm like, hey, maybe I should look that up. And I think I will. Because, I mean, yeah. I, 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 and I know, like, it, it's there, it's available, I, it works. So fuck yeah, Comedy Central. Uh, there's a couple of shows just from watching YouTube clips that I'm thinking, I was thinking about getting uh, Philo or another service like that. Um, I, How much is Philo a month? Like sixteen bucks plus tax. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah, like, no. it's it's was, way cheaper than literally anything else that has Comedy Central. Yeah, I looked at YouTube. Um, tell your whatever YouTube it is, TV. YouTube TV, which yeah, actually fucking is forty bucks a month. It is a great service though. Um, yeah, I'm not I just I'm it. not paying forty bucks a month. No, I'm not. Especially I when um, like the only thing that you get with uh, YouTube TV, in my opinion, um, for us anyway, that would be useful. Because we're not big sports fans. We're not big uh, sports mm. watchers. So YouTube TV, that part of it does not apply to us. Um, the one thing I will give them, though, is that they have like a nine-month unlimited DVR, which is really, yeah, okay. really cool. Um, but Philo does come with an unlimited 30-day DVR. So not quite as good, but still pretty yeah. fantastic. When you say 30-day DVR, is that like it saves things for 30 days? Yeah, yeah. Like the last thing – let's say it's like a – I think it's on a rolling 30-day thing. So like let's say you tell it to save something that's playing on the first of a month. It'll save that. It'll you know record it and then save it for you and we'll delete it after 30 days. So if the month you're in has 30 days, it'll be deleted on the first of the following month. Okay. So yeah, it's like I think it's like a rolling thirty day DVR. That's actually um, the DVR is how I watched the latest season of uh, of uh, Doctor Who when I watched that with uh, Jodie Whittaker. Mm -hmm. Which you know, bad. as I've mentioned before, she's fantastic. I loved her. 
this is I'm looking at their um, channel package, their 44 channel package for 16 bucks a month. Yeah. And it's just I mean, it's missing a few things, but that's totally like nostalgia from being like a, a kid and having just the basic cable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And the funny That's thing is, what this is, yeah, like like back when uh, when I was a kid, like basic cable was included as a part of like your digital cable packages and all that, which is how mm. I had cable in my my room um, for a while before I finally moved out. And uh, otherwise, that stuff like forty dollars a month from the cable. Yeah, it's yes. like uh, I'll pass, especially when you realize you don't even watch half the channels. So mm-hmm. I watch. BBC and Discovery and Comedy Central, yeah. which I think I mean sixteen dollars a month for those three channels. That's that's actually not that terrible. I gotta give um, Hulu a little bit of credit for doing a price drop and timing it right when Netflix has announced they're um, they're raising the price a little bit. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's that's just fucking good marketing right there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, Hulu still isn't viable for me. Um, mm-hmm. although I'm, I am paying like a dollar a month for it right now and I may or may not keep it. I haven't decided yet, but it's like, yeah. it's still just, it's still like, like Hulu was never intended to truly compete with Netflix. It was like that, uh, it was that package that was put together by the multimedia companies to kind of push people more towards cable, I guess. Yeah. You know? It's, it's kind of like cable adjacent. Um, yeah. they, they, there's, there's people that they're just not going to get Hulu is a way to still kind of, you know, it's it still get, put that comment content out at least in a little way, but it's kind of become its own thing now with their Hulu original type stuff. Yeah. And the fact that they are now offering an online cable package too. So. Yeah. And theirs is 40 bucks a month for, you know, pretty much what they, uh, pretty much like YouTube TV equivalent type deal. Yeah. I'm looking, okay. Fox Hulu has Fox. Um, yeah, who, who, they have, they totally. Yeah. Cause, um, that's one thing I've other, another thing that I've just like guilty pleasure been watching on YouTube, um, is this, I don't even remember the name of the show, but this show with masked singers Yeah. and they have a panel of like deal celebrities that they're watching these other people that are wearing like full huge ass, like elaborate, pretty, some of them are actually really cool looking costumes and they're singing. And the whole point of the show is that panel has to guess every episode the 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 singer who's voted as the worst. Um, they have to try and guess who the singer is by using obviously <laughs> oh, you know what they sound like. Yeah. And then yeah. they do like this this um, clue segment where they give clues to who they are. But it's it's like legitimately funny. It's <laughs> they have some comedians. The one of the ones I watched, one of them um, a person with a pineapple costume. Uh, or the pineapple head costume. Yeah. As soon as he started singing, I was like, "Holy shit, that's fucking Cheech Marin!" <laughs> that's that's fantastic. I was like, "I know exactly who that fucker is." Yeah. So I was immediately like, "I kind of now I want to go see who these other people are." Right. I want to yeah. guess these now, and I'm like, "I'm kind of maybe I'll have to go get Fox <laughs> to watch this show." Yeah, I, I I don't think Fox actually allows a separate subscri- subscription either like it kind of sucks because i told yeah, you like like how it. cbs has their own thing for like six bucks a month i would totally give fox like five or six bucks a month like that to have access to not only their older library because they've had a lot of great shows over the years but yeah like current stuff too like that would be that would like a hulu type archive service but mm-hmm. through but just fox stuff like i'd love to I'd go like- back and rewatch cosmos so that'd be awesome. I'd like it with Fox specifically to be like their current shows, like as their the way kind of like um, HBO now. Well, like I said, that's why that's is, how Hulu does yeah. it though. Hulu gets like like if you pay for Hulu, you get like an archive of shows. Plus, you get the new primetime stuff that's airing now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know that you got the primetime stuff. I thought it was yep. like the it's league. available up to like fi- only up to like five days from the air date but then but you have the opportunity to watch the new stuff too and yeah. um i after like so long at, like at the end of the season or whatever it becomes available in the archive yeah that's not bad i mean I it's not that. i my my only thing is like I, I understand um commercials and all that i don't completely hate them but at the same time i hate them so yeah I I really 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 hate commercials. I uh, Hulu commercials like when I've watched things on Hulu and usually in other people's houses, they don't bother me as much. 
Right. Um, internet commercials in general aren't nearly as bad as television commercials. For sure. But holy fuck, TV commercials are awful. Yeah, TV commercials are they're obnoxious a lot of the time, and it's yeah. just like like no, get out of it, please, please go away, please die in a fire. And, you know, like the way TV shows are designed these days, like you can tell they're designed for several minutes of commercials, which really sucks. Oh, we have the, not only designed that way, the way they've, they've broken up is so calculated mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to like leave it so you, you stay through the commercials and then I fucking, I can't stand it. The best thing is if, the, and I still remember this from years ago of having, um, <laughs> having cable, the best thing was when you could find two shows that were like opposite the commercials. So when one is on commercials, you could flip to the other one and it yeah, was yeah. just coming back. <laughs> that, that, was that was a was rare treat. That was a rare treat yeah. though. Yeah. I think I remember yeah. doing that once or twice um, with fairly odd parents on Nickelodeon and Powerpuff Girls on, on Adult Swim or not Adult Swim, but Cartoon Network. And uh, mm-hmm. it was, it was really cool because I was a huge fan of both of those shows. They were good shows. Yeah. Yeah, I usually do that with, um, or at least having a show that I didn't really care to watch the whole episode of. Right, I'd seen most of them, so my go-to was Discovery Channel with MythBusters because if they weren't showing fucking well, HB or, uh, History Channel is always showing ancient aliens, but if they weren't so, showing some stupid bullshit, ninety percent of the time they were showing uh, MythBusters. So that was like my always go-to. Ha <laughs> ha! They do science funny, and then go back to whatever the hell I was actually watching. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I I never got to mess with it. Um, so we Back got in some, the day. yeah, we got some other things that we'd like to talk about. Uh, aside from just random ramblings about cable shows. Yeah, <laughs> we do. Um, so I want to kind of touch on this. It's a really short little thing. Um, but I I <laughs> thought it was really cool. Ammo Box is a small, I believe, Malaysian developer who had to DCMA their own game, which is called Eximus. Um, sees the front line. Uh, it's like a RP, an RTS, real time strategy and first person shooter hybrid, which I think is really cool. It looks really nice. They had the DCMA their own game because the Game Wall Studios, which was the the company, and I use air quotes for company that they were working with to publish the game on Steam. And the reason mm-hmm. why they had to do that is because the Game Wall wasn't paying them for the sales of the game. Nope, they were just pocketing that cash and running with it essentially. Yep. So. They had to sit there. They had to do that because they weren't getting paid for this game. This game is in early access. They're still developing it. And it looks really, really cool. Like, I'm, I'm not going to take anything away from it. I'm actually quite interested to see where it goes. Um, for Especially for, like, an early access small dev game. It's yeah. honestly kind of like a breath of fresh air that it looks like something that, one, they were going to continue working on. Yeah. Like, fixing bugs and things. And it legitimately looked like a game I would want to play. Yeah. Um, plus that idea is that's uh, I think I I think a Ghost Recon one of the Ghost Recon games there was another shooter that took and did something similar to this right. and they it was just a side part of the game but it was really cool so when I saw I, I when I saw that this game was like that I immediately was interested because yeah. you're right like this the whole being able to switch to like a tactical view um, and then switch to a first person mode is it it's really fucking awesome. Yeah, no, like, like I love both of those games. Like, I'm a huge first-person shooter fan. I don't play much of the Call of Duties. I play more of the arcade shooters like Doom and Wolfenstein, but I love, I love first-person shooters. I'm not great at them, mm-hmm. but I love them, and I absolutely adore RTS games. Um, I'm a huge uh, Warcraft 2, uh, Age of Empires 2, Age of Empires, Age of Wonder. I, I, I play a lot of those games. I love them. So I'm, I'm absolutely interested in this game to see mm-hmm. where it goes. So I'm glad, um, like there, there is of course like a good ending to this. They were men, they managed to work with steam and they got the control of their game back. They are now listed yeah. as both the developer and the publisher. So they don't have to think about that or worry about that now. And that's really, really cool. And, uh, if you go, they don't have a middleman to go through. They don't have a middleman. So they get all of their profit minus whatever steam takes, which is excellent because that's the way I think it should have been from the get go, especially with Mm. how apparently how easy it is to publish on steam. Like there's no reason why you shouldn't have done it in the beginning with, but you know, hindsight's 2020 and I'm not going to try and I'm not trying to sound like I'm criticizing them because that's just a shitty thing. They didn't know, right? You have this game publisher. They had a library of things they had published in the past. 
and everything seemed okay. So, you know, it just yeah, happened. Admittedly small, but they were, you know, allegedly a, a, a full publisher. Right. Um, on top of it, this is, like you said, it's a Malaysian developer. Um, I believe this is like one of their first games. Yeah. Um, maybe not their absolute first, but it, it, I could definitely imagine that they're not uh, exactly first in how to advertise something yeah put it on steam right and you know try and promote to like a western audience and well, thankfully, unfortunately uh, these that whatever fucker uh i can't what was the publisher's original the, name the game wall studios yeah which uh, um uh, there's evidence that they've gone with different names in the past and mm-hmm. just fuck those assholes well the funny thing is if you go to their website which is the game at least that's the website mm-hmm. as far as i can tell um you get a wix.com error that says looks like this domain isn't connected to a website yet um mm-hmm. which wix is a, like a website building uh website you know they let you build your own website and put it up and everything and they host it and all that and it's really yeah. it's a really nice thing and they're not sponsoring us either i'm just hey they look they're, they're a nice service <laughs> um you yeah, know like if you're not like a, a major web dev or anything like that you can you can get started pretty easily with wix and mm-hmm. uh now the website's down it just it does doesn't connect to anything which is i don't know if that means that the game wall studios like they're their uh wix account got suspended or if they took the website down you know themselves or what happened but uh, yeah um so that's there's kind of a happy ending a uh, bit of bittersweet thing though they're they're attempting to uh bring legal action against them which they totally should like that's really yeah. fucked up because they're still owed money but it's also very possible that they may not be able to get in so yeah um, it really sucks this this situation is kind of similar to I, I wasn't even I didn't even think to bring this up, but it's kind of big. It's something that's going to be in the like YouTube sphere of news for a while. Yeah. Um. This stuff with um makers maker studios. That's the one who closed. Shit, I can't remember the name. Um. With uh the MCNs on YouTube. Oh yeah, the multi uh, content one, networks. Yeah, multi channel yeah. networks. The like, one big uh, one machinima that had, like, and stuff like that. Yeah, machinima just disappeared. Um, just recently, I think, just within the last week, right? If I'm not mistaken, it completely deleted their library. Didn't notify anyone. Yep. So they there's just poofed. That, yeah, five years have been putting content on machinima, and they it's just gone. Um, like years of mm, content. Year and yep. lots of good stuff. Unless too. they had it backed up. Yeah. Um. I loved the the Skyrim, um, the guy who was making like YouTube poops of Skyrim and just mixing uh, the audio. And it was like the uh, lowest fucking juvenile humor, but it was fucking hilarious. Didn't they also, didn't Machinima also host the, uh, the, the cops editions of the, the Skyrim edition of cops that someone made? Um, uh, where, probably it wouldn't surprise me if it was where, the same guy I'm thinking of where basically they, uh, somebody just played the game and, uh, they, they took voice clips from the game of guards and they, they just did a cops parody of, of yeah. Skyrim characters, which I'm, yeah. Like, I don't know if that was the guy that did the, 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 the poops or not, but those were really, really good. Yeah. Oh, main slayer. That's the guy who's, uh, yeah. Gamer poop. Uh, he made the Skyrim gamer poops and I mean, he did, uh, he was, he's done that like a ton of different games. Actually, I need to resubscribe to him because I got a new YouTube account that I haven't subscribed to a bunch of people. But he did Gamer Poops for Fallout. He did Skyrim. He did Mass Effect. He's the one who did the uh, uh, Will Bang OK meme um, that you see like Commander Shepard all the time. Right. Yeah. Um, like that, that was his content. And he used to put all of it on uh, Machinima. And I think eventually he broke away from them yeah. because they were screwing over his content back in the day um and uh, so thankfully he's got his own channel um but defy media they're the ones who yeah uh, okay yeah shut down um those fucking scumbags not only did they just shut down um the way those mcns worked was you would be a part of the mcn put up your content they would set it up so you got protected from um copyrights right and and it was the only way to do that uh, and then they would put ads on your videos for you and get the ad, the ad revenue would come from YouTube. YouTube would take its cut. It would go to your MCN. They would take their cut and then send you your money. Right. So in a perfect world, 
that's a great system. Right. Yeah, of course. Except, except for the fact that these MCNs realized, and I'm sure it's the same way with uh, Machinima, they realized that when it comes to investors and getting more money, um, they could show that bank account with all of the YouTubers' money. That's not their money, but they can show that account and go, look at the funds we have. Look at how much money we have coming in. We're fucking raking in the money. You know, you're talking millions of dollars in, in some of the bigger MCNs. I'm sure Defy was pulling in fucking bank from having Smosh and a bunch of other massive channels. Yeah. Uh, on top sure. of that, on top of that, they'd sometimes have hundreds of channels going through them, even if some of them only had like, 10,000 or 100,000 subscribers, you're still pulling in all that money and it goes in that one pool. So they would get things like they would get um, deals from investors for like $17 million or something I think Defy got a year before it closed and the money was just gone. Wow. No, it, no. It, it, and they, they fucking went bankrupt even though they had just gotten millions of dollars the year. Um, that is amazing. Like uh, so, Philip DeFranco did the video on that recently. Is this what he was basically going on about um the i can't remember this dude's name um the guy who runs the game theorists um Um, the game theory channel matt yeah so matt pat did a video he's been doing legal action against defy because they stole 1.7 million dollars from matt pat's channels and a bunch of other creators jesus Uh, christ that money that was in the account vanished or didn't vanish um it was taken by ally actually ally bank after defy went belly up so oh, wow so basically like they owed the bank money and the bank just took it because that's well, they how owe, it, apparently they owe a lot of people money well yeah but but ally had access to this money and so they took it because they were owed it and yeah well I, it's not that what happened money okay. ally has to ally essentially has to decide where the money goes okay um, because I'm assuming that Defy had a lot of other creditors coming in that want their money. However, this isn't the, the big issue is this isn't Defy's money. This is the money that they owed to all of these different YouTube creators. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, it, it is incredibly likely that Ally Bank is not going to see it that way because the way Defy Media completely like showed itself to be, um, they made every investors and uh i mean who knows what other shit they got into and they made everyone believe this is their money it's not it's supposed to go to these youtubers and unfortunately there's almost nothing they can do except hope that ally realizes oh this money should go to them first not to whatever costs that defy um owed like if they i you know who knows how many loans they took out or if they still owe for you know if they fucking i don't know like paying um rent costs or anything like that so it's this it's like a big clusterfuck situation where now it's it's coming out just how bad this mcn situation has gotten wow that's that's awful i that's one of those things where i'm kind of glad i like all right on one hand i really wish i could have gotten into youtube really early on but at the other hand yeah. on the other hand like when you come when you get to this point where these stories are coming out it's like i'm really really glad i've never got into that you know like i, I never yeah. inked that deal uh, like could you imagine like if we were doing this podcast 10 years earlier you know and we got into that kind of thing like if we had been in like the YouTube sphere, yeah, like like yeah. how much fucking money would we be owed by a company that no longer exists? Well, the you know it's even worse is that back then you had to be in in in, in an MCM just to get um, monetized by YouTube. Yeah, they would they would not send checks to individual creators. Uh, it wasn't like it is now. Uh, and, and I mean, it's just a fucking crazy situation. I and I don't know. I mean, it's not really. It, it, it's hard to blame YouTube. I, they, I know they did that, you know, to protect them, probably to protect themselves. And then eventually they did change it. So, you know, you sign up and you can get, um, ad, you know, ads through YouTube and things like that. Yeah. Uh, especially cause they're owned by Google now, but, um, it's, you know, I, I, I wonder if they have anything to say about this whole kind of fucked up situation with these companies that they were profiting from who just fucking like machinima just gone. Yeah. Just, Literally uh, off knows? the face of the planet. Yeah. Like, who knows how much money that, mother- like, those motherfuckers 
away with. Yeah. Probably uh, way more than they deserve. As as it always oh, yeah. seems to be. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just the talking about that publisher that reminded me this is the same kind of situation. Yep. If you're it's something to keep in mind if you're ever going into business. And it even uh, like reminded me when I watched uh, Matt Pat's video about this of uh, Philip DeFranco when he first went solo, essentially. Yeah. Um, like he was a part of a, another group. And I know it had Discovery was uh, in yeah, there actually, somehow. Uh, Discovery, Discovery was the uh, group that owned his channel. And yeah. uh, when he went solo, he had to spend a very, very, very large amount of his own money to buy it back. And yeah. uh, I don't think there was any actual um, concrete figures released, but I did hear it was somewhere in the ballpark of 5 to $5.5 $5 million. Yeah. Um, well, that's the those outside media groups have vastly overestimated um, and sometimes not overestimated, but underestimate you know, different uh, YouTubers and things like that. But in the case of these MCMs, uh, Disney got fucking burned. Uh, they bought, maybe that's who, yeah, they bought Maker Studio. Mm. Disney spent something, I can't remember, I think it was in the realm of 300 million, or it, it was hundreds of millions of dollars to buy Maker Studios, got Maker Studios, and then realized, wait, this fucking all of this money you have and all this money you have coming in isn't even fucking yours. Nope. It's going nope. to the people who go. make the content. It's, it's like they fucking passed the check. They, they, they passed the bill, essentially. This yep. is what Maker did. I'm sure Defy was going to do the same exact thing. Same thing with Machinima, probably waiting for somebody to offer them fucking as much money as possible. And then they could just pass it off and sell it. And it didn't happen. So they fucking just went, oh, well, we're done. We're out of business. Fuck wow. all of these people that we've uh, supposedly were helping and uh, protecting this whole time. That, shit, that blows, man. Like, like yeah, I, I I feel awful about about some of these things sometimes when this shit happens. Like, I mean, yeah, I had nothing to do with it, but it's still like this is really shitty that that even had to happen. Yeah, the scumminess, the, just the greed of people and especially when you get into corporate entity entities it just more and more like i've said it before corporations do not care about you oh, they no, don't not at want, all they don't want you to be happy they the least they can do for you is exactly what they're going to do um they don't like uh, fucking retail stores anywhere they don't want to pay their employees livable wages if they don't have to yeah they no, will make I mean... up any find any reason and any excuse to pay them less than a livable wage. Um, I, I don't remember uh, who said it. It might have been George Carlin, um, and it's been a very long time. But they were talking about like minimum wage, and I, I it may or may not have been George. Um, but basically, what they said was, you know what minimum wage is? Minimum wage is the lowest possible pay that they can give you and get away with it. It's a, it's yeah. a basically a big fuck you. Um, yeah. And he's right. Like, it totally is. Like, like minimum wage is not a livable wage. But you know what? We're, we're going to get into politics here, so maybe we should. No, yeah, I don't want to yeah. do that. But yeah. it's just it, – you, and like we talked about, Philip DeFranco said before, that's why he got out of it. Yeah. It's not only are they – will they try and control you. They will screw you. They will do whatever they can to profit off you and then throw you away like you're garbage. Yeah, yep. And, and once you're no longer relevant, you're gone. You lose everything. Exactly. That's kind of those industries. It's just, just fucking crazy. I mean, that's that's why when we started this this podcast and you know, a couple of years ago now, because we're coming up on our two year anniversary. One of the <laughs> things, at least for me from the get go, was I never I never wanted us to join a group like that. Like even if we get to a point where we're never profitable, we're never as popular as we could be. The one thing I never want to do is I never want to get us in a point where we don't have control over what we're creating or where we don't have control over what we can do to make money. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I want to maintain our creative control, our complete control because we're the ones that built this. You don't get to come in and tell me how it's done. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's a lot of times when people compromise and sell themselves out to make that money uh it sucks yeah it does like i and i feel for them too because i mean the goal of life unfortunately because of how th everything's built is to make money so that you can live well mm -hmm. and uh you know i don't know i i i'd rather work and and make a living that way than 
if we were able, were able to do this and make a living. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would not want it to be in a corporate like setting. I, I want us to be doing our dumb shit, our, saying our stupid things, making people laugh how we make people laugh, or keeping people interested however we keep people interested. You know, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't want that. I don't want some dude in a suit telling me I can't say fuck on on my podcast. Like, no, fuck you. I'm, I'm gonna say fuck. You know. And if we get to a <laughs> point where we're getting like sponsors and shit, I want them to be the kind of sponsors that will let us do the sponsorships in our style. So, you know, yeah. if we're talking about underwear, like, I'm going to say they cut my balls so amazingly well. Like, you know, I'm going to I'm going to be saying dumb shit like that if I'm it's, allowed to. It's one of the things I love about podcasts in general um, is there uh, are a, a lot of advertisers know, you know, who they're getting in bed with and what kind of people they're going to be like Bill Burr. When he does his ad reads half the time, he fucking mocks the product <laughs> and they still go. Yeah, because um, it's Bill official- Burr. Because I mean, you get Bill Burr. Exactly. He's this big dude. He's a big. He has a big following. He's a huge comedian. Everybody knows the yeah. name. So yeah, if he says, "Hey, go buy this underwear," you know, and then makes fun of it, I'm going to remember that yeah. more than somebody. Me on this. Yeah. I cut my balls so nice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. You know that that's the that's that's it. That's what I want. It's funny. Like you listen to him and this uh, whatever Monday morning podcast. Sometimes I'll, I won't listen to clips and episodes and he'll start doing the ad read and then he'll be breaking off and like, what fucking kind of shit am I talking about? And it's like, they're still going to pay him for that shit. <laughs> yeah, because he's so, he's going to get people that are going to check it out and they're going to buy. Yeah, that's great. I love that kind of yeah. So let's move <laughs> on a little bit because um, I don't think we're going to be getting to any gameplay videos because we're, we're we're like half into this already. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. But uh no One thing that did happen, uh, and actually oh, happened, what, yesterday, I believe? Um, it's like Metroid Prime 4 has been oh, delayed, yeah. right? And that's yeah, fine. Nintendo. I'm completely okay with that. But the, the video that they released announcing it, you had uh, the what the director of development or the president of development looking to you saying himself, like, it straight up, it sucked. What what had been created wasn't up to our standards. So what we're mm. going to do is... is uh, we're going to start over and we're going to do it right. And we're going to work with uh, retro studios, which is good because like, that's something that we need. You know, I, I want retro studios to, to create it because retro studios was amazing. They did the initial one. They did the first Metroid prime mm-hmm. and the first Metroid prime is still one of my favorite freaking games of all time, you know? And it's just, it's, it's amazing. So the fact that they've got the director of Metroid and they're they're going to be working with Retro Studios themselves, it's like yes, make it happen. Yeah, and yeah it was. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I, like the transparency, though that that's like that's the thing for me. The fact that Nintendo themselves they came up, they they popped in, they said, "Hey, we're sorry." Like who yeah. else would do that? You know, what other game company in in recent memory has come out and said? We're sorry it's being delayed. It's not up to our standards. We're going to start over and make it right. You know, you got like the EAs of the world and the Activisions of the world oh releasing uh, Ubisoft of the world, releasing broken games, uh, releasing half games and then finishing them later. It, it's like like you know, like Star Wars Battlefront. When you bought that <sighs> game, you didn't get a game. You got like a couple of maps and things to shoot. And then the game came later. Same thing happened yeah. with Destiny. When Destiny released, you didn't really get anything. You just you got a you got a a, a, a space hole a shooter. short shitty campaign, and then a few uh, MMO style missions that you had to grind over and over and over again. Yeah, it was sad. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it, because those companies aren't looking at we want to make a good game, good product. Uh, we we're wanting just we just want to sell. And we want to sell this year. Yeah. And this is when it has to be done. It's that's Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah. That game was absolute trash. They said, you have this long to do it. We don't care. Get it done or it's your ass. Um, they did the same thing. It's when they cl- when they closed Visual Studios. They said, hey, you don't make this kind of game, but we're going to force you to make uh, a cops and robbers version of Battlefield. Right. Get it done in this amount of time. Put it out. And if it's not successful, it's your ass. And that's what EA did. And it was like way better than it had any right to be, even though I, I hated the sh- I disliked it. 
because to me it wasn't Battlefield. But they did things in it that were different and new, um, that were good. It's just unfortunate that a company that had no experience in that kind of game was forced to make it. Yeah. Instead of being able to make like another Mercenaries game or um, something like that, something like like Just Cause style. Uh, it's fucking it's bullshit the way they do that. Now, um, go ahead. It's it's I was going to say, like companies that would uh, even companies that would look at something and go, this isn't up to our standards. Let's scrap it. Start over. Most of those companies won't tell you like, no. who knows how many time Rockstar went over and over with like GTA five yeah. or Red Dead Redemption. I mean, you look they at um, uh, another sleep. example of that is um, Final Fantasy 15. You know? Exactly. Um, that was the other one I was going to say. Yeah. Um, um, Square, specifically with Final Fantasy. There are other things that they're just publishing that going through other companies, they don't give a shit. They're like, hey, go ahead, make your game, put it out. It's garbage, whatever. Right. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but no, with Final, Final Fantasy. Fantasy Sarah, yeah, no, Final Fantasy 15 went through like a 10 or 12 year development cycle, I think. And it got scrapped a handful of times it's like jeez man and they went been... through how many different engines they fucking remake the engine every time yep. and then oh this engine now seems dated and start over again but but you didn't even finish a game in that engine yeah but no they we've progressed past it so we're gonna we're gonna have to scrap it and start over now one thing <laughs> um i i don't know how much truth this is um mm -hmm. when it comes to metroid prime 4 apparently what was going on is uh that nintendo was doing a sort of experimental ad hoc development process and this is coming from Imran, Imran Khan who is a uh, game performer senior editor so I, I kind of give it eh because I, I haven't trusted Game Informer in a very long time um, yeah. but basically according to what he, he's heard um, they were doing like an experimental ad hoc process where there were parts being made in different countries with different studios some studios mm -hmm. were trucking along fine some were saying it was on fire and everything was burning down it was being terrible um uh. so what apparently happened is i guess some internal thinking at nintendo said hey it needs to be in-house and apparently retro studios made a pitch for an involvement and put together a demo that nintendo was like yep that's what we're gonna do and so I find that interesting that whatever work they had done, which was apparently like they were well into development on the game, whatever work that Retro did made Nintendo go, okay, well, all of this, we don't give a shit about this. Fuck this. Yeah. We're going with you guys. Which honestly, I think they should have done from the get go. And yeah. um, one of the comments on this that I'm reading is um, Retro being the ones to pitch a demo and get approval should have such a lot of fears. And I agree. Like, cause, like I said before, Retro Studios did the original Metroid Prime, and it was amazing. And I think they didn't they have didn't they do the second one too? Um, I I would assume I think they did the yeah, second. Yeah, they one. sure did. The third one was the one that kind of went off the rails, wasn't it? Uh, maybe. Um, yeah, it was Metroid Prime Corruption. No, developer uh, Retro did that too. It was other M where okay. things I think went off the went off the fucking rails. Yeah, but, that's the one where uh, they just ruined fucking Samus. <laughs> Yeah, they turn her from this strong, silent woman protagonist into a bitch baby. Like yeah, a damsel in distress. Yeah, I hated that. I fucking hated that so much. Um, yeah. But the one thing I will say... Oh uh, my god. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, my yeah. favorite fucking Metroid game of all time. One of my favorite GameCube games of all time. I, I loved Metroid Prime 2. I loved that it took all the good shit that Metroid Prime did and then added a bunch of other stuff that I thought was really cool. The different suits mm. and shit. I thought I loved it. I loved Metroid Prime too. Yeah, it's a game that I always I, I didn't play. I wish I would have at the time. Um, I just uh, Metroid Prime. My one issue with that game was I I wasn't so big on backtracking. Uh, mm. I did eventually play through almost almost completely through the through the game. Um, but at that at the very end, what's like oh you have to go collect all of these things. I was like no, I'm done. <laughs> it's, <laughs> It took so long to get from point A to point B yeah. that I was like, I I think I finally that's that that's what was like I'm done playing this. Yeah. Plus it wasn't it wasn't like it, it, uh, it I was it was like the side game I was playing. Right, right. It was something I had picked up to like for like the summer, like when there's a game drought. So as soon as new games came out, I was like, and we're back over the piece. I mean, honestly, see, I I grew up playing uh, the Metroid games, so. Backtracking mm -hmm. to me and, and Metroidvania style games were like 
they were my bread and butter. I loved exploring things. I loved finding new shit. I loved, mm-hmm. you know, getting power ups and being able to reach an area that I couldn't reach before. And like Super Metroid is probably my top five in my top five favorite games ever created. And so Super Metroid was that was that game for me. And then Metroid Prime came along, and it was Super Metroid but in three D. And yeah. then Metroid Prime Two Echoes came along. And it was even more Super Metroid button 3D because I, I, I just, yeah, I loved it. And so I, I already had that, like, I don't know, training, I guess, to love those games. So when those yeah. games came out, like, I automatically just, fuck yeah, give me this. And, um, I mean, I I liked, I liked with the Echoes, like, the light and dark side of things and the way they explored that and how they combined it all at the end. I, I, I can't say i remember completing echoes um Mm -hmm. so hopefully nintendo does something really cool and releases like you know the metroid prime trilogy on the switch because like that's an instant day one buy for me i will skip eating for a week to make sure i have that that is something interesting that i mean you could go back and forth on an argue on you know oh nintendo just keeps re-releasing games or not you know they're not making anything new and interesting but there are games like this, the prime series is a great example of something where i mean there's a lot of people that would like to play you know that would probably pick those up that maybe didn't play them on the gamecube i i would probably get that to experience those games and play through those games um especially to play the second one since i never i didn't touch it yeah um and yeah. it's perfect for just putting it on there nintendo marketplace yeah yeah for sure i mean it's not a it wouldn't be a very huge game even with some yeah. updated hd visuals you're going from maybe eight to ten gigabytes um and bayonetta bayonetta 2 smash bros uh, legend of zelda like they're all those are all games that are like top 13 14 gigabytes so they're bigger than all three of these games combined so i mean yeah mm-hmm. it, it's, i think it's i think it would be great um and I, I kind of want to see where this goes, and I definitely would like an HD remake. And while we're yeah. on HD remakes, you know, like give me some of the older Zeldas too. You know, like I, you me, know, give me Twilight Princess or uh, I don't see. I I could come maybe see them doing um, Twilight Princess. I I don't I don't think they would do a, another HD remake. I think they if they released the Wii U version on the Switch, I'd be happy. Uh, cause I mean, I bought it on the Wii U, but I never fucking played the Wii U. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I fuck dude, I've still considered buying it on the Wii U because we still sell it. And I, I really yeah. just want the Wolf Amiibo, but I have mm-hmm. considered sitting there buying it. Like, Hey, I could I buy Amiibo. that. And then I could buy, I could borrow someone's Wii U and then I could sit there and fucking play it. Cause I really do want to play it through it because yeah. I, I never, it's a great game. yeah, no, I never got to complete it. Fuck. I don't even think I got to whatever the counts as the first dungeon in that game. So uh nintendo is that company where i mean part of it is that's my background of gaming was all pretty much all nintendo until i started playing the original xbox but their back catalog they have so many games that like you talk to any any gamer out there and they can probably think of uh 10 nintendo game oh yeah that hasn't that hasn't been re-released i want that game oh that game i love that game i i just want to play the original version of that game now yeah. But, you know, because you can't get it, you'd have to go and buy, like you said, you'd buy a Wii U or go back and buy an N64 for certain games uh, or like just go way back there. I was amazed when they put um, it was rare, but I mean, it was an N64 game when they put Jet Force Gemini on the uh, rare pack that came out for the Xbox One. Yeah, you know that when you were sitting there mentioning like Nintendo sixty four, going back and and playing these old games, Jet Force Gemini was one of the first games that popped into my head uh, yeah. because it was a good it's, game. It, it was legit. Fucking fun. great. Yeah, like like I I would so love to play those games. That game. I didn't beat because the game went, hey, go collect five hundred little things, and then you can fucking play the final mission. And I went, yeah, fuck you, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Never buddy. Actually, that reminds me. I need to go on YouTube and watch the uh, end of that game because I never finished it. Yeah, no, I that was one of those games that I I know I remember playing. Um, but this was back when I I like I was even worse at video games than I am now, and mm-hmm. um, so I still use like cheating devices and stuff. And I I don't know what the hell happened, but at some point my moral compass went. I should probably stop cheating at video games. <laughs> yeah. Started playing them, and uh, I, I got a rule now um, 
where until I have either A, played a game to the point where I know at least 80 to 90% of the secrets on my own, or B, have completed a game's at least main quest line, I won't cheat at it. So I did yeah. that with Skyrim, um, and I, I beat the ever-loving fuck out of that game. Uh, did that with Morrowind, I did that with, you know, basically every game that I've played since, like, probably Morrowind in 2006 or 2007... Um, I've done that. I've done it with every game since then. Um, mm-hmm. and so I, I've just tried to, I've tried to keep to that. And I think like there might've been one or two games where I, I probably did use some cheats that I didn't complete, but yeah, no, I, I won't cheat on a game. I, I won't use cheats in a game unless yeah, a is for fun, like paintball mode or something, or yeah. it's like, I, like I said, I've completed it. If it has a completion, you know? Because not all games do have a completion. Some games are just there for you to goof around in. Yeah, especially when you're talking games like that old. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so I still remember when I was terrible, like legitimately bad at video games, right. where I very, like adventure games would just stump me. I would get to a point and like have no fucking clue where to go. Right. There was no, I, I didn't have the... um mental i didn't just had didn't have the problem solving skills yet i didn't have the well why don't i go over there and see what's over there i didn't i hadn't figured out that that was a thing i could do right and i still remember like in ocarina of time um i rented that game like six or seven times after playing it at a friend's house because i thought it was the most amazing video game ever and would the farthest i could get was uh the to become adult like and then i was just fucking stuck but I remember the point where I went from that to figuring, oh, wait, I can go here and I need this. Side. And then it clicked and I went from being like terrible at video games, like even games like Goldeneye and things like that, where I would just not be able to finish certain the like the later levels because I just was not good. Right. Um, to the point where like Metroid Prime is a good example. When I first bought that game, I could not stand it. I just was like, no, there's too much. I'm not, I don't want to go around and do all of these things um, until it, I, I think it was after I played Castlevania Circle of the Moon or Symphony of the Night. Well, Symphony one of the, the Night first... was the original Metroidvania. Um, Whichever all, one came out on PlayStation. On... Okay, well, it wasn't that one then. It was uh, the Game Boy Advance game. Well, there were three. Um, you had Circle of the Moon. You had... Was that the first one with that the cards? That was the very first one, yeah, with the cards. That first. was the one. Yeah, yeah, it was Circle of the Moon because I like just did not. I, I it was too much game, I guess, for me at the time. Right. Um. Until it finally clicked, and I was like, oh, I could just, I, I actually have the skill to keep going and doing these things. Right. And then I went back and played Metroid Prime. Like I said, got all the way to almost the very end of Metroid Prime when it finally was like, all right, I'm done. Um, but like Zelda, same thing, go back and I start, I, you know, say I never really used cheats to beat many games. I had a game shark, but to me, most of that was for fun, except for, um, Star Wars shadows of the empire. I fucking cheated the hell out of that game to beat it right? <laughs> because I sucked at it. And that game was legitimately fucking hard. Right. But, um, but it got to the point where I would use guides in playing uh like zelda i think i used a guide in majora's mask right well um, you know what though I'm, I'm going to give you um as somebody who has played the ever-living fuck out of the game both on the original Nintendo 64 on the gamecube with that uh that special release that they did and then yeah. on um on the 3ds majora's mask is incredibly deep and intricate. There is so yeah. much shit going on at any given time. So, like, I will give you that one. Use a fucking guide on that. I had to for some of the things, um, like getting some to, of the masks and all that, because it's it's yeah. just there's so much going on. There's so many events that could be happening at any point. It, it, it if you're not paying attention, or if you're like you said, you don't have that cognitive capacity just yet because you're not developed yet enough because you're like 12. So it's like, yeah, yeah no, I I totally get all that. So and the that was mask, game. Even now, I give that. <laughs> yeah, it's because there was so much many things uh, up in the air to keep track of with that fucking three day cycle. It was fucking mind boggling. Yeah. Um, the funny thing was getting the guide where I was stuck at was like the most fucking obvious thing. 
that I should have, like, it, I just, what I had to do just did not come to me at all. But it was the easiest fucking thing in the world where it was, it was literally I had to punch something. <laughs> but I didn't, it just didn't. So I went and did all of this other stuff out of order. Like, I did half of the Zora's uh, dungeon before I had finished the Goron's dungeon. <laughs> I had done stuff in um, the like the later game areas. I had just I had done a ton of exploring because I didn't figure out that I had to punch this totem thing as the Goron. <laughs> <laughs> and I was finally I finally broke down. And was like fuck it. Uh, I don't remember if I went to Game Facts or I bought the guide. Whatever it was, I ended up getting and looking and just being like, oh god damn it. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't fucking get this. And then after that was like, oh, oh my god, there's so much in this game. Yeah, no, I'm using this guide now. Because <laughs> like, especially when you go to get all the masks in that game, there's just so much. Like, like okay, these three days I have to do this, 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 and this in this order in time, and that this is the only things I can focus on. Right, right. <laughs> that game, fucking amazing. Uh, and I'm really glad to not play that sort of game ever again. <laughs> I yeah, I mean, I I loved Majora's Mask. Um, it's still my probably my favorite Zelda game to date. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. But I I can't I I'm I can't say I blame you. <laughs> I don't think I would sit down and play that that kind of game now. Um, just it's. Just because most of the time when I'm playing games, we've said it before, I don't have that long. I don't have a lot of time to just sit there and uh, focus on the game in that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. and so that kind of amount of backtracking and that I, I'm not a big fan of um, roguelikes anyway. Right. And these the games where you die and restart uh, over and over. And even though you're, you know, you're getting a little more stronger each time that that whole system doesn't appeal to me very much. Right. So Majora's Mask, like now, I could imagine looking at that game and being like, "Yeah, no, fuck, fuck all of this." <laughs> yeah, so it sounds like you probably wouldn't actually like Dead Cells because that's kind of how Dead Cells works. You, you, you exactly. Go, it's you why fun. it's it's why I haven't picked up Dead Cells. Like I, I, I give all credit to that game. It looks beautiful. It looks fun as hell to play. But um, I like I've I've uh, elite. Is it Elite Danger? There's there's a couple of roguelikes I have on my Steam, and I've played them a little bit. But it, they're not something that I would keep playing. Over. Right, um, right. Enter the Gungeons is a good example. Fun as fuck bullet hell game. Just I, you die and start over, and I'm like, cool. I'm not gonna play this game for another six months. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. That, like that. That's kind of how Cave. Uh, what is it? Cave Explorers or hold up. I let me. Uh, let me Cave Explorer. <laughs> hold up. No, no, no. I've got a game. No, Daddy. No. Cave Blazers. Cave something. I, I got the game. I love it. And uh, I've, I've played a lot of it. Cave Blazers. Yes, Cave Blazers. That's kind of how Cave Blazers works. You, you're a dude. You start off. You go down into a randomly procedurated, randomly generated, um, procedurally generated, rather, uh, like just cave and you shoot things and you collect things and you get stronger. You get a little farther each time. And it's a really nice little fun game. It can be a good distraction. Yeah. So I, I kind of like it. But that's kind of the way that works. Um and of course, Dead Cells, which I will give a billion and one amount, like just just as much praise as I can, because I I love those games. I love the game. The game does the game does its genre well. Yeah. Oh, uh, but if of course if you don't like those kinds of games, you're not gonna like Dead Cells. But I've played 75 hours on Steam, probably plus another 20 or 25 on my Switch. So um, yeah, I can't I can't get uh, enough of stuff like. That. Uh, there's a game like I was really into when it came out. Uh, I bought it not realizing it was a uh, called Everspace. Yeah, that's really really fun. But that's the way that game is. Mm. is that, oh, uh, it's it's a roguelike, but it's a space shooty game. It's Which cool. sounds cool. Yeah, was, who doesn't like space shooty game? Yeah, I actually got it thinking it was going to be made, hopefully a better version of Elite Dangerous, mm. uh, where I didn't have to deal with other people. I could just fly a spaceship around and shoot shit, and then it ended up being more of a roguelike. But it's still um flying a spaceship around shooting shit so it's right. still pretty fun right randomly generated um uh soul not solar systems but the areas where you warp into and fly around shooting asteroids and destroying ships and stuff right right well i uh, i uh I, I, do you have anything else you want to talk about because uh... i did so there was some funny news recently uh just the other day um from our favorite whipping boy ea 
Um, oh yeah, so we, they we have love this... to shit on EA. Oh yeah, anytime we can shit on. This is this is like an EA but doing oh Ubisoft level of failure. <laughs> oh so, Ubisoft. Yeah, so EA has this big fucking game coming out this year that they're hyping the shit out. Everyone's heard of it, probably. Um, just I don't think there's many people that care. Uh, Anthem, and they did their VIP demo just came out. Um, let's see if I I don't even know what day it was this week though. So their VIP demo demo drops. Uh, the moment it drops, uh, the servers crash under the stress. Now is here's the a, kicker. Is this just amazing? Though? Like it's a VIP oh, yes. demo. So you're going to imagine that it's a VIP demo, meaning there's only not everybody can get to it, right? Like average Joe's no, like they you know me, the gonna... exact number of people that right, have yeah. the capacity to get on this and they still failed to keep their servers running because they, like we said, cheaped out and have their servers are all Amazon servers, which I mean, OK, that they rent. I want to I want to go ahead and, and throw this out there kind of like a side note. Um, Amazon's web services are by no means terrible. Their their cloud servers no. are uh, they're really good, and they can be very useful. They can be very cheap for storage and bandwidth and all that stuff if you decide to use it for that. Uh, their cloud services for computing and AI and stuff like that are all very good. So I I'm not going to sit there and just shit all over Amazon. No no um, no I'm not I, I don't want to shit on Amazon and blame them. Right. Um. It's very much whatever EAs and. and I was reading comments and reading some articles and it's a lot of stuff that I don't understand, but it's a lot of tech stuff about these servers that EA just was not doing correctly to manage the amount of people uh, that somehow overwhelmed them with this. So here's the, here's the kicker. Um, it didn't over just overwhelm the servers of this demo, right? Which every AA game that's released, you expect to not be able to play the game for two or three days, like the battlefield series, because their servers won't work. Right. Because it's EA. <laughs> this brought down the servers for all of their other games. Maybe not all of their other games, but specifically Battlefield 5, Battlefield 1, and, and the like. And apparently crashed Origin for a lot of people. Jesus fucking <laughs> so, Christ. Like, essentially, God. they fucked all of these other people who've paid $60, $80, $100, whatever fucking dipshit version they had they fucked over their fun um as of when these articles came out the ea had apparently gotten some of the pcs the pc version back up and running hadn't gotten the xbox or ps or xbox or ps4 or maybe just the xbox versions up fucked all of their other games <laughs> their online system and completely <laughs> That That's that is yay. okay. That is a whole new level of, of just incompetence. I I wow. As as a as a as a human being with of moderate intelligence, that makes my fucking brain hurt so much. Like that's that's their level of incompetence, right? Like they 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 did that. They 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 sat there. They set these servers up, and they somehow. Set them up in such a way that if they failed, they they brought other servers down with them. And I I don't know how to respond to that. I just I just don't. Yeah, it's it's EA. Like I said, it's completely expected when they release a big shoot like online game to fuck fuck their servers and not even a fucking demo. Just crash everything. I I think that um I I'm gonna go ahead and say that. I think that is significantly worse than an oh Ubisoft moment. <laughs> it's like I, I don't even think Ubisoft could fuck up that badly, and they're almost professionals at it. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. Wow, that yeah, no, I, I don't. I, think I hadn't heard about that. Ubisoft would would make that huge of an oversight. Like like I hadn't heard about that. Like I knew there were people that were having trouble uh, playing Anthem, of course. I didn't mm -hmm. know it was that bad. I didn't know yeah. that it brought down their other servers. I didn't know that it had fucked up Origin. You would think they would have their own dedicated servers. I guess you would Apparently be wrong. Apparently they don't. Yeah. Apparently they use shared cloud servers. Like, why? Just uh, fucking, I was like, are you shitting me? I am I flabbergasted. <laughs> I'm going to bring that word back and use it. Flabbergasted. God, that is that is yeah. really, Anthem really stupid. Anthem release overloaded servers. EA confirms it is worth 
<laughs> oh man all right well you know what um i think, I think we're gonna go ahead and wind it down there you know i think that's the perfect story to end it on yeah ea uh <laughs> ea fucking up which you fucked it up <laughs> insert that clip from uh done. insert that clip from that po- uh, that uh my little pony thing where he says you fucked it up you done fucked it up or of course uh Angry Joe, Angry Joe, where he just yells into the camera. What was he talking about? What game was he talking about when he said that? Uh, uh, he uh, That's what he does generally on the, with the internet, um, bad games that he's hyped up for. The one that I specifically remember most was uh, Colonial Marines. Right. Yeah. I remember that. I remember watching that video. I don't watch much Angry Joe. And I, I, I just don't. Uh, I, I don't have anything against him. I just don't care. You know, it's just another one of those things where I just don't care. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and wind it down there. Hope you guys enjoyed our, our rants and raves about random topics, uh, mostly video game related. Um, you know, if you guys enjoyed it, you know, share the podcast, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, give us a rating, whatever, you, whatever. It doesn't cost you guys anything. And, uh, if you do want to have it cost you something, you can always throw us a buck over on Patreon. So for the ungodly geeks though, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. See y'all later. Hashtag fuck EA. <laughs> I always.